see if there was a difference. But they wanted to go ahead to the robot where they were eating the breakfast. Yes. And because the game children wouldn't have taken the picture. Well, you see, you, if, if you just give the, the, the kids the iPhone and said, take the pictures, you could have measured to see how... Because then yeah. you would at least know, does the game motivate them to take the picture? Yeah, th there was actually a study which suggested that the act of you taking a photo of your own food is the, all you need to improve your dietary habits, right? Yeah. Just the act of you... Because they, they had a group of, I think, 30 people, which they gave the camera, but the camera was fake, <laughs> it was actually not taking photos, and they tell them to take photos every morning when they were eating breakfast, and after a month, the people were actually reporting that because they had to look at the food and take the photo, and the act of taking a photo was like, if you're taking a photo of junk food, you feel bad about yourself, so, you know, just the act of taking a photo was made sort of shaped yeah. on their food choices and made them improve their diet. That's right. So you didn't actually need to anything else. And they didn't analyze the photos because they were actually not taking the photos. They were just, you know, faking it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so even Sorry? Did they knew it? The, the, the participants they didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They thought they actually had a camera with the film and they were actually taking a photo which then would, would be, be processed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no. So so the, so here, what, what we're talking about is, is like how we analyze the quality of these papers, okay, and, and this particular paper. Um, now, if, I'll, I'll quickly go back to this one, and we'll summarize some of the things we've talked about. Okay, so, um, in this paper, right, you would say the aesthetics, we've got the, the aesthetics were a, of the aesthetics of the game. Well, it had that cute wee puppy dog avatar thing, right? So, so it's a cute puppy. Um, now, that can raise some questions of, you know, what if it was a robot? Would that engage some of the boys more if it was like, you know, killer robots that you were breeding by having better breakfast? You could choose an avatar, they. So there was... Are you sure that isn't three? Cute puppies, um, cartoon avatar. Right, so they're, they're mostly cartoon. Um, I don't think they had robot like like killer robots as one of their avatars. Um, yes, they had robots. So, Somewhere in the text it says that they could have a robot or a worm or right. an apple. An apple, okay, yeah, that was wrong. Right. So so they, but they had this cartoonish avatar. The mechanics, what are the mechanics of this game? You take pictures and see the meat. That's what the player does. Right? So so it's a, a taking pictures. Is taking pictures is what the player does. And you can also look at that to some extent the so taking pictures is what the player does, and you can break the mechanics kind of into what the player does and what the game does. So the game gives you feedback by changing your the look of your avatar, giving you points, and giving you text-based feedback. Right? So your feedback is um, feedback is text avatar and score. Yep. So, so you one of the, so we can look at the game, try and analyze what is the player actually does in the game, how they get feedback from the game. The technology we already know with an iPhone, an iPhone front end, and the back end was human beings. <laughs> right. So, human analysis. Um, yeah, this would be tricky to roll out to all American kids, right? Um, and you, you, you could try and do some interesting rollout where, you know, I, if I signed up for this service for my kids, I would get a bunch of images from other people's children, which I would rate. So I would do a kind of, you know, community thing. Mm. Right? So every parent wouldn't rate their own kids' food, they would rate other kids' food. Right? So everybody would have to rate each other's food, and that active observation might be enough to make be, make parents make better food. Or you can just add them on other social networks. 
<laughs> or you can just use the Amazon Mechanical Turk and get it for pretty cheap, right? I mean, six cents, that's, that's not that's not much. That's... Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. The thing I do like, though, is that mm-hmm. the paper I also suggest using uh, finger processing. I would like to see that algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yeah. That's the uh, holy grail. Uh, yeah. Actually, yeah. I read an article where, with, with uh, what uh, Simon mentioned earlier with the blind in our shop, they've actually been researching machine learning where they have tried to actually make programs for blind people that give them a speech and feedback. So, like, they take an image of what they hold in their hand and then they tell them that you're holding soup for. <coughs> Mm-hmm. That, that is the, the, the boxes or the... Yeah, that's a little bit yeah. easier yeah. problem. Yeah. You have to assess how much, how little, what's the mixture, yeah. what's the hand. So I think it's even much more complex. Right? Yeah. Um, because even for humans, it's an impossible task if you're looking at the plate. Like, what's the calorie you know, content, okay. what's the protein content of the plate of food? It's what a really is, hard task. Im- image processing matching packaging. Um, that actually is, is pretty good now, right? If you take photograph of pretty much any book ever published, Amazon will show you that book and give you a price range, right? Because it's yeah. it's got the Im- it will cover images, and you take a photograph, it just tries to find the feature point in that covered image, and bang, it gives you the it's it's version that book. Okay, so technology iPhone human analysis story, the story of the game. If pet has had a hit, you've got a pet, it lives on your phone. Um, if you eat breakfast, your pet will be happy. That's pretty much all the story. Um, and, you know, for kids who really would engage in an ongoing story, that story probably ends a bit fast. You know, it doesn't really have a, a, a story arc or intrigue or a kind of climax or a hook or any of those kind of things you might want in a good story. Yep. It actually had a, a story, uh, like the Tamagotchi, it actually had a full story arc, right? You had the, a whole lifespan of, a, of this creature, whereas this was more kind of a wee snippet and no real story on either side. Um, so this was probably very weak, right? It's very weak story. The mechanics were like, you know, not really challenging physically or mentally. Um, taking a picture is not a really hard thing to do. So it wasn't challenging physically. It didn't have an engaging story. It had a little bit of cuteness in the aesthetics, and the kids responded, oh, okay, that. And it had, it had a big tick <laughs> on the iPhone, right? Which is probably what made it the most engaging for these kids at that point. Right? Now, different games, you can look at these four elements and say, where a game mostly focuses. So for example, in uh, Tetris, right? We generally think of Tetris as having big mechanic, right? Um, aesthetics, yeah, they're okay. Um, story, almost none. Uh, and technology, just the block rotation stuff. So not a much, a big mechanics game, right? Um, first person shooters tend to have spent quite a bit of time on the aesthetics and the mechanics. Often not so much on story, though some of the new ones do put a lot of story into mm. the, the game, uh, and a lot of technology, right? So first person shooters tend to try and hit these three. Though some people would claim they're pretty low on mechanic, because all you do is, like, you know, aiming. You're, all you're doing is aiming, right? You're not, you're not got lots of complex interactions like a strategy game might have, mm. or, or those sort of things. So, so yeah, you can look at the balance of these these elements. Um, and comment on whether the game puts much effort into those. And as we're talking about player types um, and learning styles, these different things appeal to different players in different ways. Right? So some require there to be story. If there's no story, they're not interested. Because they know that they are interested in narrative. Okay, so um, we're running way, 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 way short enough. But okay, so it's been an hour and 40. Um, we've talked a bit about that. Now, um, I, I'll i talk another two or three minutes. We'll have a look at the questions you asked about this paper. And we'll go over the um, the other two papers on Thursday. Right? Um, a bit faster because I won't have to go through the introduction of all of this stuff. We'll just use these talks. Now, 
what we're going to start to do then is for you guys in the later papers, we'll start, and I see you've been putting your names up, excellent. Um, I'll start making, I'll start finding some papers for those, and you guys can start find, finding papers in those areas. Um, and we'll go through and we can start writing these up in terms of what kind of experiment are these. This would be a quasi-experiment, I would say, would probably be the, the highest level we could say, because it's not randomized control trial. So we will hopefully therefore build a kind of, you know, a matrix almost to say, you know, this paper has these features, this paper has these features, and then we can compare papers and compare results. Okay? Um, it's probably a quasi experiment. I mean, it's more it, uh, action research, design science type of mess. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would, I was, I, I'm hesitant to call it a quasi experiment yeah. because it doesn't even feel like it's it that high. The hypothesis is that it's trying to prove or disprove, so it's not an experiment, I would mm. say, the other term. No, it's a it's an intervention, yeah. perhaps. Um, I it, it, it's it's interesting, and it sh it kind of shows you it's possible to write a game that relates to kids' diet. Um, but one of the things it doesn't do is what like um, effects duration is something we also look at. Effect duration. Um, even if this game made every single child eat a beautifully balanced diet every day they were playing the game, what happens the day after they stop playing the game? What happens a month after they stop playing the game? What happens a year after they stop playing the game? If you go to tw page 25 in their paper, uh, almost at the end, so they, the big column, they say, Ultimately, games should be fun and a virtual pet game. Oh, it was there. No, no, that's right. Okay. Children should look forward to taking care of it. Obviously, children will eventually become bored unless we keep on adding features. So they will be there forever adding features to that game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, nice. so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, prob the problem is, yeah, they'll, they'll get bored. And if they stop playing the game, and we know this from other studies, if you motivate people and then just stop, um, sometimes they won't eat the breakfast. The reason they were eating the breakfast was for the pet. Once the pet's there, what's the point of eating breakfast? Right? And in fact, they're, they're, they, they don't report in this study, but in other studies where they pay people to do art, if you take away the payment, take away the motivator, people do less of it than they would have done if you just left them alone. Right? So once you start intervening, um, with a motivator to do a task you should be doing anyway, you've got that risk of damaging the innate behavior, right? Of, you know, I eat a good breakfast because I should eat good breakfast, right? Not because of a pet. Um, and so you've got to be very careful when you start playing with those motivations. And so this one, you know, it's, it's lovely and all that they, they tried to help, but they could have made it worse for these kids. Right? So a year later, I, it would be interesting to see the follow-up. Um, I think we're, we're, I looked for the follow-up to this. There is none. Right? They got their funding. They did their research. Meh. Moved on with their lives. Moved on with their lives. Um, and often you find, and truly often you'll find, in a lot of these publications which you find on serious games, they'll have this whole future work section. We make every PhD student write a future work section. We make master student write a future work section. Um, they're often just disappeared, and they don't get funding for the next round of activities, so nothing happens, right? And you don't get the follow-up experiment. Uh, and follow-up is really important when you talk about health and long-term effects, uh, because, as I said, for, the, for, for, for sodium intake, increasing or decreasing your salt intake, your body adjusts over a six-month period. So unless you have a follow-up six months later, you don't actually know the effect you're having on someone. Right? And if I intervene now with make me play a game for a week, um, and I say, look, you lost some weight. Excellent. Um, have you kept it off in six months' time? Oh, most certainly not, right? Have I made you play the game for the whole six months? Have you retained that level of enthusiasm and playfulness in it? Uh, that depends on the game. Right? And one of the big challenges for a lot of this research is how do you know if the result is related to games 
or the quality of your game. Right? Because if you make a really bad game, maybe it's not game's fault. Maybe it's not that it's a game that means that it's a bad intervention. Maybe it's just your game isn't a good game. Right? So the same with textbooks. When we look at textbooks, um, you wouldn't, it would make a lot of sense to say, and you'll see some of these will make say, you, like, you can do a game for this, or games are good at this, right? Be a bit like saying books are good at teaching people stuff, right? And books are really useful as a, a way of learning a new field. You know, if you get a good book, it might be, but there are a lot of bad books out there, right? And you know, if I gave you a Mills and Boone, a novel of, of, of kind of, you know, romantic story, and then ask you your physics knowledge afterwards. Will you learn any physics from reading your Mills and Boone? Probably not. I can't think of any of the Mills and Boone stories that have a lot of physics as core learning material. But you know, that's because that isn't just, it's, it's not a good tool for teaching physics. A good physics book might be good at teaching physics. A bad physics book might be bad at teaching physics. It's not that it's a book that matters, it's that the quality of the actual instance is what's important. Right? And that's where you get a lot of in these in these serious games is, you know, is this a good game? Would you guys call this a good game? I don't think it's a pretty good game. It's, a, it's an activity. I added some cuteness to doing a task, and it's giving you some feedback. But it's not really what I'd call a good game. So if, it's, if, if it found that, you know, this game didn't affect the children much, so games are not good at, at helping people with diets, I would think would be an unfair conclusion. Bad games are good. Bad games are not good at teaching things. Yeah, okay. Um, bad books are not good as course material. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Good books might be good as course material. So how do we make better games? So we'll have a look at the other two um, next week, uh, no, not next week, on Thursday. Uh, and I want you guys to fill in, and I'll, we'll, we'll give you guys, we'll stop, and then you guys can leave in a minute. Um, if we go to Fronter, um, if we have a look at these topics, uh, have I, if I reload? No, if I reload, it does stupid things, doesn't it? Of course. If you try and reload, it goes back to the, to the main page, because, you know, you just click on the tab. Will it reload? Loading. Right. But you might have been logged out. You made it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love you. You are so awesome. You make me appreciate my life so much more. <laughs> the thing is that they use it in JavaScript. That's why it all goes back in English because it doesn't really load new pages. It just loads new tabs it by using JavaScript. It does a JXE thing, yeah, and I think I've been logged out. Um, so, Marcus, do you have any questions? Are you still here, Marcus? 